So if you watched my last meet, you noticed that I pulled sumo, even though I hadn't been playing sumo at all in competition. And that's because now that I'm larger, I have a really hard time uh, keeping the bar path in a straight line when I'm deadlifting. And when I push the bar forward away from me, it makes it almost impossible to grip because the bar's going to spin. And then you're not only fighting the weight of the bar, you're also fighting the torque. So to correct for that, the easiest way for me to do it on short notice was to pull from a sumo position, which allowed me uh, to more easily replicate a straight bar path. During this off season, I'm going to have to work on my conventional deadlift so that I can do that still, even with that position. But for right now, Amber's going to show you how to find a good setup for your sumo deadlift and to keep uh, your shoulders positioned over the bar so you can also find a straight bar path with that. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite ways to set up for the sumo deadlift. Um, one really common mistake that a lot of people make, you now of course there are anatomical variances, but for the general population, you're gonna wanna set up with the bar about an inch away from your shins, and it's gonna cross over your midfoot and your pinky, your pinky toe. What commonly happens from here is a lot of people will squat down to the bar and then as they try to wedge themselves in, they have no glutes. You can feel your quads loaded here and a little bit of adductor, but then as they go to push off the floor, their hips will rise up and then they're too much over the bar and you can't correct from there. Sumo is super technical, so if you don't have these finer details intact, you're not gonna complete the lift. My favorite way to fix this is to, what I like to call sit down into your quads or drop down into your quads. Um, Basically, you're gonna drop down, feel like the top ends of your quads here load, you're gonna feel your glutes load, and you're gonna feel your adductors load. From here, I now hinge back, so my shoulders are gonna be a little bit over the bar. And as I grab the bar and take the slack out and wedge myself in, the bar then comes into myself. I'm in line with my armpit here, and the bar's just gonna come straight up, and I just have to bring my hips to the bar. So if you know anything about sumo, um, you know that you want to set up with your hips as close to the bar. That doesn't mean get your hips close to the bar. That means you want to be able to set your hips up at a height that's in correlation to your torso. So from here, I can hinge back. I'm hinging, everything's loaded. I grab the bar, set up, I'm nice and upright. My quads are loaded. My glutes are loaded, my adductors, and I'm creating external rotation. And I just have to finish the push at the top. So again, just to reiterate, we want the bar across your midfoot and about your pinky, pinky toe here. Um, that's going to leave enough space to create that shin angle. So your knee is actually going to come over the bar a little bit here. We're going to find our quads, hinge back. Now one thing I should say is if you drop too low and you hinge back, you're gonna end up way too far over the bar. So the best way to know where that position is, is that when you hinge back, your shoulders and your hands are gonna essentially be in line with the bar. So again, I'm gonna hinge back, grab the bar, pull the slack out, get nice and upright, and finish the lift. in particular and hopefully it'll help Ben when he tries to pull sumo next time. Um, if you have any other questions or comments drop them below or shoot either of us a DM. Thank you for watching. Wait what do I do if next time my biceps are too big? I don't have that problem with biceps so get smaller biceps. <laughs> I don't know.